Hi, I want to start this video with a video that was shared underneath one of my videos and also uh, talk about what is happening here in South Carolina, Georgia, Florida. And I want to ask all of you who live in the region right here, how are you feeling? even extending into Alabama, Florida, South Carolina, Georgia. All right, we've got a lot going on. It is psychotronic warfare that is taking place. I have never seen radar the way that I have been seeing it recently, but this, well, I'm going to show you some captures. It has been going on since the 18th. Every time I have gone on to the site, this is pulsating away, pulsing away. And someone left a comment underneath a video where I showed this, and they said it was pave pause, pave pause which is the radar system. Um, it's Air Force Space Command, and they use this to detect missiles. They also use it for space surveillance. All right, I will link below to everything. You can check out Pave Pause. But I don't think it is Pave Pause. Pave Pause, in the comment that I received, it was at an Air Force base in Georgia and Florida. This is, well, the Air Force base in Florida, which is Robbins Air Force, or Eaglin, Eaglin, E-G-L-I-N Air Force. I, one or the other, Robbins, Eaglin, is in Georgia or Florida. But the Air Force base in Florida, is approximately here in the Panhandle. Robbins Air Force Base is in the middle of Georgia. But we do have a Nexrad Doppler radar station right here, right at the center, where these extremely long or extremely low, and they are long, frequencies. Um, right here in Jacksonville, Florida. So where you see the center, that is the device that they are using to create these frequencies, to emit these frequencies right here at the center. All right. Um, let me just play a few minutes of this video. I will link below. I hope everybody watches it and circulates. This is on That is Impossible. That is Impossible's channel. Very good video. The main issue before us today is Senate Bill 637 and Senate Bill 894, uh, the former by Senator Hugh and the latter by Senator Knopps. We're going to invite the uh, first four witnesses in support of the legislation, and that would be John Jones with Sprint, David Lewis and Andy Emerson with AT&T, Neil Krebda with Verizon, and Frank Abcavetti Jr. with T-Mobile. So be straight with me. Is it true? It could be. No, well, there are a, a, you know, very no few cases. There was an unfortunate really incident out in Iowa. Oh, look, gentlemen. Practice these words in front of the mirror. Although we are constantly exploring the subject, currently there is no direct evidence that links cell phone usage to brain cancer. I'm Sharon Goldberg. I'm an internal medicine physician. I've practiced medicine for 21 years, and my background is mostly academic, internal medicine, hospital-based, clinical research, and medical education. 
I'm a certified Microsoft Small Business Specialist. I've worked on Space Station designing the cabling system for the airlock module, where I was responsible for EMI, EMC analysis, which is electromagnetic interference, electromagnetic compatibility. I am a professor in the Department of Epidemiology, Biostatistics, and Occupational Health, and I teach there both toxicology and health effects of electromagnetic radiation. My name is Daphne Tachover, and I'm the founder of an organization called We Are the Evidence. Uh, we are an organization that represents the many adults and unfortunately many children who have become very sick from wireless technology radiation. There seems to be a couple false Easter eggs being put out there right now. I want to make sure we dispel that right off the gate. The effects of wireless on health scientifically are very, very clear. So it's always pushed back to the definition of an acceptable level of radiation. And that's what this is, by the way. This is about radiation. Wireless radiation has biological effects, period. My name is Dr. Angie Kolbeck. I've been reviewing the studies showing the impacts of wireless radiation on our health, and there are now thousands of studies showing the following adverse health impacts to wireless radiation. Cancer, oxidative damage, DNA damage, DNA failure. Things like you know, memory, uh, dizziness, anxiety, brain fog. Headaches. Nosebleeds, cognitive problem, exhaustion. We have evidence of DNA damage, cardiomyopathy, which is the precursor of congestive heart failure. Short and long-term memory loss, decreased attention spans, lower reaction times, um, even involuntary contractions of muscles causing misalignments of spines and jaws. Breast cancer. We suddenly have breast cancer in women who have no DNA predisposition. Disrupted immune function and change in stress proteins, reproductive and fertility effects. There are dozens and dozens of studies that show beyond any doubt what this uh, radiation is doing to our sperm. Now, if you take this, the, the cell phone out of your pocket, the sperm will recuperate within three to four months. What would not recuperate would be the damage to the DNA of the sperm. That is irreparable. The wife of the ex-governor of, of Indiana was diagnosed with glioblastoma. Same brain tumor Ted Kennedy had and John McCain had. Did you look at John McCain's scar? This is a cell phone brain tumor. Um, LeBron James, one of our sports people, had a salivary gland tumor. That is another cell phone uh, uh, tumor. You didn't hear about it because immediately after that was discovered, he would pay, was paid by Samsung to become their spokesperson. We are seeing increases in, in brain tumors. Uh, we're seeing increases in Alzheimer's. We're seeing increases in uh, all of the neurotransmitter diseases, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, um, Parkinson's. These are all disease systems that are known to be associated with low-level energy exposures. We're talking about the 24-7, around-the-clock exposure, whatever you are and your whole body. You never get away from it. And it seems from our studies that maybe your immune system can cope with it for a time but it will deteriorate, then the irradiation will definitely damage cells at the deeper level, and the question is what will then happen? These are out of peer-reviewed papers, so these are not just hypochondriacs thinking that they're doing it. We, we're having real problems with this. This is no longer a subject for debate when you look at PubMed and the peer-reviewed literature. These effects are seen in all life forms, plants, animals, insects, microbes. So 5G is not a conversation about whether or not these biological effects exist. They clearly do. There is scientifically evidence that is so strong that you can be certain that the standards used by the FCC to manage health effects are wrong. So, we have been living in this environment for a very, 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 very long time. The cumulative effects are already showing their face, and those cumulative effects are horrifying. We have a very, very sick country now, filled with people who have various medical issues. Are you feeling it? Well, very often we talk about these uh, physical effects, the physical effects. I'm going to get into the psychological and emotional effects.
But before I do, I want to play just a few seconds of this. I'm sure you can feel and sense the storm. And that's what this video is about. It's about the beauty in the storm. And it's about why we need not fear the storm. And Q has mentioned over and over how important it is that we not be afraid. <clears throat> uh, the team has mentioned that we're safe, that they're on top of it, uh, that it's going to be okay, even though there's major disruptions happening, but really good ones to, um, to end uh, the cabal's hold on humanity. Okay, if you want to pacify yourself with Q or your religion, go right ahead. But it has not been okay for a very long time. It is not okay presently. And it's not going to be okay tomorrow. When we see weather being used as a weapon and people are losing their homes, losing their livelihoods, losing their loved ones, when we see so many who are now struggling just to get through the day every friggin' day because they have what is now termed microwave sickness from the microwave frequencies that are pulsating at us from smart meters and cell phones and cell towers and Gwen towers and Doppler radar stations. We are not okay. Now, somebody who is comfortable and has had um, the very lucky experience of not having to suffer the consequences of this cabal, they are living in a bubble, believing that everything's going to be okay. When so, it, it, it could not, it, this is such a delusion. It is such an incredible delusion. As your fellow Americans are literally dying, you can say everything's going to be okay. Wow. Nothing is okay. Nobody should be just relaxing. No one should just be, oh, sitting back and looking at the beauty. And, yeah. Q, they got it. Don't worry. Don't worry, guys. You sit back and we're going to take care of it. How long has this been going on? So we've got, what, tens of thousands of people who are being pacified with Q? You know, I'm sorry. This, this, uh, <laughs> the human being, how they so want to grab hold of something and then cement it in their brain, telling them everything's just going to be fine. Everything is fine when nothing is fine. Nothing is fine. And we see that on a daily basis. You know, you want to believe in Q. You want to believe in, in, in your... Uh, your spiritual, you want to believe the new age crap, you want to believe that Jesus is coming back and don't worry, everything's going to be fine. I got comments underneath my video that I posted last night where, you know, an eight-year-old die, uh, an eight-year-old girl dies in Florida. Um, I think now it's six fatalities from the storms that were manufactured in uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, and the comments read that they went out and they threw their arms up and, and, you know, they asked Jesus for protection and they got it. Wow. Good for you. Somehow you have just the way to pray for that protection. But that eight-year-old girl was just, well, taken out. She wasn't protected. You know, that kind of psyche is really phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, God protected me. Jesus protected me. Oh, well, didn't protect them, but too bad. I guess you don't know how to pray. 
Look, this has been going on for a long time. I have subscribers who are dying. They weren't dying years ago. They're dying now. All right? I've had subscribers who have died. People are losing their life. Subscribers who are not suffering the consequences, now they are suffering the consequences. And once you get into that realm of life, you get nothing is fine. Nothing is fine. So sit in your little bubble. You're still comfortable. Look at the beauty. And don't worry, Q is going to take care of it. It's maddening, guys. It's so unbelievably maddening. Now, what the hell is going on here? This has been going on. This is the, the 18th at 12.30 p.m. I don't know what it is with South Carolina, but South Carolina has been showing some intense frequencies. This has been nonstop, or at least it's going every single time I have gone on to this site, I see it pulsating away. But we've also had uh, a whole lot. Let me uh, let me show you. Okay, this is uh, what time? Two thirty on the eighteenth. It's pulsating away. Four o'clock or four thirty on the eighteenth with more frequencies that are coming into upstate South Carolina. I can't tell you, I have felt absolutely horrible. And I don't say that for sympathy, so that's you don't have to cover that. I'm saying it because I know that other people are really not okay. And those are the people we need to hear from. We need to hear how many people are being affected by these frequencies. I mean, it's really remarkable what's happening. Look at what's happening here. Here we have Nebraska, Kansas, and it's like what we see are just boom, scattering of precipitation. This whole thing was created because, uh, like, one day before, there was nothing, and then you look at it the next day, and boom, we've got a, a damaging storm from the Gulf of Mexico right on into Canada. This is the 19th at 117. These have been pulsing away, the Doppler radar stations pulsing away. I mean, it's really, look, this is what is referred to as silent weapons. Look at the microwaves. Are blasting off in South Carolina, along with the extremely low frequencies. It's really remarkably um, in your face now and that we are at war, it cannot be denied. It cannot be denied. And then we have these extremely low frequencies coming out of North Carolina. Um, yeah, it's just been going on and on and on. This is the 19th at uh, 12.24 and the 19th and here they are again all 
Okay. Um, let me show you. This is current. This is present. Real time. So, I'm not going to read all, all of these um, articles, but please click on the link below. Get yourself educated on these weapons. This is a brilliant investigation, a brilliant report of an investigation by Tim Rifat. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his name, Microwave Mind Control. The effects of these microwaves, radio waves, which is what you see, okay, extremely low frequencies are the um, infrasound, infrasonic, sonic weapons. And then the, the continuum of the electromagnetic frequencies go on up into the high frequencies. But these are very low frequencies that you are seeing engulfing this entire region and has been for quite some time. Uh, it's now, it started from when I saw it on the 18th at 1230 p.m. And it's now 12.58 p.m. the 20th. So this has been going on for 48 hours. Now, why do I say the time of this, the, the length, the duration of exposure? Because in experiments right here, effects of 6 through 10 hertz, extremely low frequency on brain waves, here he gives a very clear um, explanation of these frequencies locking on to your frequencies in your brain, and I'll get to that in one second. But this is very important. So the effects, blood, uh, cardiovascular system, cells, central nervous system, digestive system, glands, metabolism, reproduction, visual system, internal sound perception, this is the environment that we are living in now with microwaves affecting all of these biological systems. Now, the Soviets used the frequencies and intensities used by mobile phones, eight, uh, 1800 megahertz and 900 megahertz as weapons. 900 megahertz as weapons. Here, this is target their website, 900 megahertz cell phones. Our population, they're walking around with weapons, weapons, and they don't have any clue because they don't want to have a clue. They don't want the clue. They have become so habituated to this new technology, which has not been around for very long. They won't give it up. How many people have I told, your cell phone is dangerous. Frequencies emitted from your cell phone that you stare at six inches from your face while you play your games and you, you know, text and, and nobody cares. You know, it's, we have a problem, guys. Everybody is walking around with weapons, staring at them. And the, here, it is a rule of the intelligence community that you hide things in plain view. Getting the public to accept microwave mind control weapons, which affect their behavior under the guise of mobile phones, was a stroke of genius. Getting the public to pay for these microwave mind control devices so their brains and behavior can be damaged to make them more docile and easy to control was pure diabolical genius. Microwave weapons that turn people into stressed, confused, submissive, 
zombies. They were using these weapons during um, the Thatcher years in Britain. The law enforcement in Britain are using extremely low frequency signals which mimic natural brain waves at a flick of a switch. All the people around these microwave transmitters are turned into submissive zombies who cannot think clearly, become depressed, apathetic, and want to lounge around all day doing nothing. Okay. Well, um, how do we get people out of th this uh, zombie state of just the apathy is so widespread. And yeah, this is apathy. This is apathy right here. Everything's going to be okay, guys. Everything's going to be okay. Don't worry. You're going to be fine. Don't worry. My God. All right. Um, there is evidence that the extremely low frequency magnetic waves can affect brain waves. This set of experiments was designed to study the effects of extremely low frequency rotating magnetic fields on the brain. Right here. Okay. What is this doing? How are you feeling, guys? South Carolina, Georgia. Um, uh, uh, Southeast Alabama, Florida. How are, are you able to think? Do you feel like your your brain is just a fogged mess? So, specific brain wave frequency ranges can be associated with mood or thought patterns. Least understood frequencies. Um, which are the theta waves. The alpha frequencies are from 8 to 12 hertz, and that's associated with being relaxed, a meditative state. Beta frequencies, 12 hertz or above, coincide with our most awake analytical thinking. So when I see people who have just been so cued, I feel like their beta waves have been greatly affected. They're not using their analytical skills. Uh, a question of importance. If we can electronically shift the brain wave frequencies to alpha or theta, Will a person's mood or thought patterns change to those commonly associated with those frequencies? Will their state of consciousness change to coincide with their brain waves, even if those brain waves were electronically induced? Well aware of the possible ethical implications involved in extremely low frequency research was this uh, researcher. Um, but yeah, think about, think of the questions, think of the implications. If I were carrying an ELF transmitter operating at alpha frequencies, would the people around me be affected as well? Would they unconsciously gravitate toward me because they'd become more relaxed as they moved closer to me? Would they like me more because they felt good when they were around me? Could entire populations be influenced to be comfortable with ideas they would normally reject. These and many others are serious ethical considerations involved with ELF research. They cannot be taken lightly. Can people have their brain waves changed so that those that you were relating to find suddenly you're not anymore and they turn hostile towards you? or they begin behaving in ways that they would not ordinarily behave. I've heard from many of you, and I've had the experiences of being shocked by people that I thought I knew. Well, what happened to them? Because I now do not know who they are. They're strangers behaving in ways 
that I never believed that they could behave in obvious, obvious immaturity. People saying, well, uh, I didn't know saying something that was untrue is a lie. Hello. So the lock on for all frequencies from 7.4 to 10 hertz. Two subjects displayed no lock on over the entire frequency range. While I did not test a sufficient number of subjects to be statistically significant, I suspect that susceptibility to extremely low frequency entrainment follows the normal bell-shaped curve. Bell-shaped, the majority are in the bell shape. Um, you, you can't predict who is going to be susceptible and who is not. Lock-on generally occurred very rapidly. When the brain did lock on, now lock on, these are frequencies. Frequencies that are emitted very powerfully in a particular region. The brains of the individuals walking around existing within this region, many of these frequencies being emitted have locked on to their brain waves. And no, they don't realize it. We are electromagnetic beings. We are electromagnetic beings. So when we have these artificial anthropogenic frequencies coming at us, they change our frequencies. Um, the brain locked on to higher frequencies, 9 to 10 hertz, more readily readily and maintained the lock on for the entire duration of the transmission. Frequency was lowered 8.6 hertz below 8.6 hertz. Lock on for most subjects occurred in bursts rather than being continuous. For example, there might be immediate lock on for two seconds, then the brain would fight the extremely low frequency for a quarter of a second and then lock on again for another few seconds. I used the word fight because it looked like the brain was fighting the extremely low frequency to maintain its own frequency. So very often there's a battle going on in your brain. Now the, the, the natural response, biological response, is to fight those foreign substances that are coming at you. So can you imagine the chaos that's going on internally in all of our bodies? The fight became more frequent as the frequency was lowered until no lock-on was observed. None of the subjects were able to consciously detect the presence of the extremely low frequency field. One female subject was able to detect whenever the field started or ended, but could not accurately say when it was on or off at any given time. In other words, she was able to detect the change in the magnetic field, but not the presence or absence of the magnetic field itself. But she thought she felt it because it aggravated her, sin uh, her sinuses. Hang on. How many of you are having sinus problems how many times do I hear people having sinus infections? Reports occurred between 8.6 and 9.6 hertz. Common statements, tingling sensations in the fingers, arms, legs, teeth, roof of mouth, a metallic feeling in their mouth, tightness in their chest, tightness in their stomach, uh, between 6 and 7 hertz, ringing in the ears, flushed, face, fatigued, tightening in the chest, and increasing pulse. Lock-on occurred at lower frequencies more often when the transmitted frequencies were progressively lowered rather than randomly presented. It would seem that the brain prefers a gradual lowering of frequency rather than a sudden or abrupt change in frequency. Brain waves do, in fact, 
lock on to artificial produce extremely low frequencies in the 6 to 10 hertz range. Well, let me show you this. A uh, short, a short, short, short history of sound weapons, extremely low frequencies. At higher volumes, infrasound of around 7 to 20 hertz can directly affect the human central nervous system, causing disorientation, anxiety, panic, bowel spasms, nausea, vomiting, and eventually unconsciousness. Supposedly, 7 to 8 hertz is the most effective being the most effective being the same frequency as the brain alpha wave. Extreme low frequencies in church pipe organ music instilling religious feelings and causing sensations of extreme sense sorrow, coldness, anxiety, and even shivers down the spine. You notice how music affects us? Okay, it, it's the frequencies. 7 hertz they have, they know the, the frequency that can alter one's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, their psyche. They know how to alter it with specific frequencies. 7 hertz, supposedly the most dangerous frequency, al alpha rhythm frequency of the brain. It's alleged that this is the resonant frequency of the body's organs. Therefore, organ rupture and even death can occur at prolonged exposure. 1 to 10 hertz, intellectual activity is inhibited, blocked, and then destroyed. Neurological interference. 43 to 73 hertz, lack of visual acuity, IQ scores fall, to 77% of normal, distortion of spatial orientation, poor muscular coordination, loss of e equilibrium, equilibrium, slurred speech, and blackout. 50 to 100 hertz, intolerable sensations in the chest and th uh, thoracic region can be produced. Even with the ears protected, other physiological changes that can occur include chest, all vibration, and some respiratory rhythm changes in human subjects, together with gagging. Frequency range between 50 and 100 hertz also produces mild nausea, giddiness, resp respiration-related effects. 100 hertz at this level a person experiences irritation, mild nausea, giddiness, skin flushing, body tingling. Following this, a person undergoes vertigo, anxiety, extreme fatigue, throat pressure, respiratory dysfunction. Here are the effects of studies. Acoustic weapons. A prospective assessment. These are the studies that were done long ago these are the frequencies that they are emitting. Yes, we have a frequency war going on. Psychotronic warfare affecting, affecting, well, right here, the people in this region. Um, the Gwen Towers emit extremely low frequencies. Perception and behavioral effects of electromagnetic fields. These Gwen Towers are all over. Uh, and they're not just lined on the interstate, but, well, you can't find where they're locating on the Internet, but you can drive around. And when you spot them, they're in your communities. We've got a Gwen Tower here in Anderson. And it's not too far away. Um, when you feel vibrations in, in the home, in your home, apartment, the floor is vibrating, you can bet that these Gwen Towers are emitting frequencies through the ground. This is the Ground Wave Emergency Network that was decommissioned to be the emergency network 
in the 70s, so why do we have so many Gwent Towers all over? They have proliferated. They are littering our environment. But what these Gwen Towers, the extremely low frequencies coming from them, shocks and burns, heating of human tissue, auditory perception, got that tinnitus going. Um, you hear the ticking or buzzing or hissing, knocking sounds. 8.9. Sound was perceived at all frequencies up to 8.9 gigahertz. Behavioral changes. These extremely low frequencies can create an awful lot of, well, yes, fatigue, difficulty in concentrating, uh, increased frequency of headaches. Never, never did I have headaches. Now I get them frequently. So I will link below. There's a tremendous amount of information um, in, in all of these articles and studies. Um, guys, this is very serious. So you want to sit back and just go, okay, everything's going to be fine. Well, uh, the powers that be pacified you. Success. You've been duped and you become a useful idiot. A useful idiot. Sorry, guys. I, I suffer and watching all of my subscribers, how many they were so fine years ago, and now they're not. Nothing is okay. Nothing is okay. How could it be okay? You have one of these phones. You're holding a weapon. You are holding a weapon that is being used against you and used against all of us. All links are below.